Hi, everybody. I'm Sandy Duncan, intuitive medium and host of Behind the Scenes with the Rescue Mediums. We're going to get right into it this episode with Michael, Edna, Jackie, and Allison, and talk about one of the most memorable episodes of the Rescue Mediums. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Sandy. Hi, everybody. Hi, Sandy. Hi, everybody. Hi. So, my understanding is, for everyone watching, we're going to be talking about the episode entitled Over the Rainbow on YouTube, and it's actually on veryparanormal.com as um, season four, episode one. So S-O-4-E-O-1 for everybody following on veryparanormal.com. We have a little rundown, and I know that you've got good memories of this episode as well. Mm -hmm. um, took place in Hillsburg, Ontario. Um, there was a little boy in spirit. There was a little girl in spirit. I'll leave it to you to fill in the blanks. And the little girl in the episode was called Sarah. Can we please have your thoughts on this one? Well, what's interesting about this episode is that it was, there was more than one rescue. And the rescue that appeared on, um, on TV was the rescue of the little boy. That's the one the editors kept in. But there was a, also an older gentleman as well that, that oh. did play a role. I don't remember that, Jackie, do you? I don't remember that one. Oh Tell my God, more. I don't remember it. <laughs> do okay. you remember that one, Michael? I don't remember that at all. I don't, no, I don't remember the older gentleman. No. Okay, no. Well, let, let me remind you. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Please do. I, <laughs> I was pulling out all my notes and um, I, I'm going to go to the show and tell because well, that's what we call the part that we shared with the uh, homeowners mm -hmm. we always just called it the home and the uh, show and tell and um, I always transcribe down every word that's spoken on that so I've got a few pages here of the show and tell notes the other man was Hugh Fred McMillan mm -hmm. and he was connected with the house across the road and that's one that you were drawn to. It was an older house in the um, in the area. And his wife's name was Bessie, which you also got in your premonitions. Mm -hmm. He was in the front bedroom, a front green bedroom, with energy going through. And he sat between you. Yes. Oh, I'm sort that... of... Re Didn't we walk up and down with him at one point? Or is that a different rescue? <laughs> I don't remember. Maybe, honestly, I just don't remember any of it at the moment. Mm. He, he was confused. <laughs> he needed help. He was happy to go through to the light. Yes, and he gave sir. information. Um, and Alison, you, you got that he was digging and tending vegetables. Right. Right. And... Um, a total look of confusion on your face and I. There's a big question mark over my head at the moment, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm waiting for something to go ding. Yes, I remember it. But. Well, in 1879 to 1955, he was a potato grower. His mother and father built the house across the road, the old house. Right. Passed very quickly of a heart condition. Yeah. Yes. And, and then I had a little note um, about Fred, the buttons of a boy. And he sent them into the bedroom and the boy told him that he was buried underground, that he was under the house. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Something's ringing a bell. I'm not sure what it is. But yeah. That's... Because didn't that little boy in spirit tell Sarah that there was a body under the Underground. house? Underground. Yes. Under... Yes. 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 He said there was a fire. And there was a body underground. I remember yeah. that. I don't. I don't remember the spirit man as such. But those like little snippets that are coming up now are ringing a bell. One of the times he told her that there was a body under our house. It's a human body. I didn't want to be in that room anymore. I saw somewhere right. in this dense brain. Somewhere. <laughs> well, it, I think in this case, the editors often just picked one of the rescues to yeah. actually televise if, if. There were more than one, and often there was more than one, wasn't there? Mm. So obviously yeah. the story with the little boy was much um, larger and um, more endearing, I think, than than a Fred. Yeah, the connection to the little girl in the house as well. Yeah, little Sarah. Yeah, yeah, because she, um, I think, because 
little Sarah in the house really connected with that little boy. That's why we were called in, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Do you know um, uh, Nadine, the homeowner, she yeah. was wonderful about sharing information with us and sharing um oh her family trees and 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 etc and she sent through five type pages like oh, this wow. of what was going on in the house wow That's wow. great. and i wonder if i could just could i read just a little bit because oh yeah yeah because we've, we've not we've not heard this we've not we need the rules won't it jackie yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. Don't, don't read all five pages though. no i won't <laughs> <laughs> it might be a bit long that <laughs> <laughs> true true the editors will be coming in um okay so she said why we need help i had a chat with our daughter that was sarah this evening thursday february 21st 2008 that made my heart take a dive, my stomach pitch, and my skin crawl. Mm. Yeah. We recently, in December of 2007, moved our daughter into what, into what was our spare bedroom, as her toys seemed to be taking over her former bedroom, and we decided to make it her playroom and give her a bedroom that was away from her toys. It all started when I noticed she had hung a cross on her vanity. She caught me trying to move it from the vanity to over her bed, but she didn't seem all that settled in her own room, in her room. She was having nightmares. So I thought it would help if the cross was near her bed. She was most upset with me for moving it and demanded that I put it back where it was. She said she could see it from her bed when it hung on the vanity. She also asked me to teach her how to pray. I asked her what she wanted to ask our Lord, and that is when I found out that a voice had been telling her there will be a fire in the night and she won't wake up. Hmm. Heaven forbid. She's only been getting this message since she moved into this room. She's very disturbed by this, and so am I. A little boy had been visiting her for three or four years. And oh my God. Done that was telling her there was going to be a fire and she wasn't going to wake up. Something different. That there was going to be a fire in the house and I would stay asleep. He was about her age, from what I can remember, because we saw him, didn't we? I mean, obviously, we you know, when we say we see him, we, we, we see who we're connecting with here. I saw him clearly. I remember he had like a... Um, a bucket of tadpoles. I That's remember right. that. This family really strong. Come okay. on, we, we won't hurt you, we want to help you. He's got like a bucket with tadpoles in it and he's got dirty knees, he said. As if he's been kneeling down and sort of, yeah. you know, over the water and getting the tadpoles. Okay. Right. Visited there. I didn't Sarah say that she always saw him in different coloured pyjamas. Pyjamas, yes. Yeah. You did, yeah. you're right. She was she was sort of used to him being there. But I think what really scared her was that thing about the the house was going to burn down and he told her that there was a body buried on the ground. under the under the house. Yeah. Um and um and I'd forgotten what that was connected with until Edna's just reminded us about that with the, the second rescue, which mm -hmm. I'd forgotten completely about. Mm, me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there have been many rescues over the years. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Little Sarah would have been born gifted, psychic, correct? Yeah. Yeah. She was very psychic. And with yeah. well, that would mean that her mom was also gifted to some respect. I think her grandma was as well. Didn't she? She physically saw a That's spirit it. child. Yeah. Was uh, it the I girl she was the seeing? Girl, the girl, yeah, she saw the, so the girl. grandmother particularly was mm. psychic. The fact that she could physically see the girl was kneeling over the edge of the chair, and, uh, and she vanished. I come in. 
here and laid down, got all comfortable, and just out of the blue, something hit me on the head three times. But it didn't feel like an adult hand, it felt like a child's hand. In this episode, the, the mom had shown you a drawing at reveal time, and it was half lion. Oh, half yes. Oh, yeah, Jeffrey's father. Right. Yes. Do yes. you know what was so uh, funny about that? Um, I drew that picture um, before, I think before I left England, I drew that picture. So I was tuning in to where I was going to be going uh, into once we got to Canada. So I, and I had to do that really, really quickly. So it was half man, half lion. I thought, how strange, you know, but I was told to put it in. When we did the show in Pell that Nadine uh, got a picture out. I think she had drawn a picture for her father. Right. And it was virtually the same. It was half yes. man, half lion. Yeah. And, yes. But you know, the interesting thing about that as well. Oh, there it is. There it wow. is. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? It was honestly, it was really quite bizarre. And yeah. the, the thing was, I think, Alison, you had 11 years written down in right. your premonitions. Uh -huh. and Nadine had drawn that 11 years previously. Smart, isn't it? Yeah. A lion. Jackie begins by presenting the psychic sketch. When I saw this picture, I thought of a drawing that I had done for my father. I ended up acquiring it after he passed on, which was approximately 11 years ago. Something that happened 11 years ago. <gasps> a great big crack. Oh, my God. But that's oh, what we goodness. call the lion man. Oh, my goodness. That is fabulous. The rescue mediums intuited Nadine's drawing before arriving at her home. We also... Uh, Sandy, so, so good for us, you know, to know that we've been listening properly to what Spirit are telling us. And we sit there going, oh my God, <laughs> and yeah. we're, we're surprised. And, yeah. and we shouldn't be because we we trust what they're giving to us. But it's still a lovely surprise for us when everything comes together, you know, like it that. Is. Yeah. It is. And it all, fits in, all those little yeah. tiny bits that you've had in your premonitions that sort of seem a bit disjointed, they come together and you say, oh, my God, yeah, that's yeah, what it is. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> is that picture behind you, Alison? It's a liar. Oh, my God, it oh, is. Gosh, You're right. And that is my um, that is my totem animal that I've seen since I was a child, the lion. And it was only yeah. when I and it used to frighten me, but it's only as I got older and realised that he is my totem, he's my spirit animal, and he was sent yeah. to look after me when I was frightened of my gift as a child. Fabulous. Yeah. Well, wow. you know what? It, Maybe. It was May spotted, Michael. I didn't even think of that when you were you know, talking about Lion. Now you're saying that, Alison, I, I wonder if that's why the lion was meant to be shown for little Sarah. Maybe the lion is her totem from her grandfather, who is in spirit. I think there was quite a lot about this um, episode. It was the first one that you and I worked together on, Alison, wasn't it? Oh. It was, and it just yeah. blew my mind. It literally blew my mind, the whole thing. And then... When we were leaving, because she was a rainbow child, wasn't she? Yeah. Sarah, um, really psychic little girl. And then as we were leaving the house, I don't know if it was one of the crew members, might have gone, mm. oh, look, a rainbow. And we looked up and there was a beautiful rainbow right over the house. Yeah. And that was a real rainbow. It wasn't anything that the editors had sort of put in. It was an actual real rainbow. Yeah. And I just thought, this is so meant to be, you know, at that point. I just thought, this is going to be an incredible journey on this show on Rescue Mediums, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for helping everyone. Oh. As the Rescue Mediums say their goodbyes, their most colourful premonition is about to come true. Bye. Oh, oh a rainbow! <laughs> a rainbow, oh, Sarah! Oh, look, Sarah, it's your rainbow! Oh, my goodness. Look at that. that incredible. Oh. <laughs> That is, isn't that terrific? Yeah, they never let us down, Jackie do they? <laughs> oh. oh, bless her. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was oh, incredible. It and didn't you have the name Sarah in your premonitions? Yeah, I did. But you did, yeah. didn't you? 
Yeah. And um, uh, I had Rainbow Child, uh, and you, it, had, you, did. you had Sarah. Child. Yeah. Um, and I think, did you have fire? And I had dr uh, water and drowning in the prayer. I, I think, think it might that, have been, it, I can't remember. It was either but, that, obviously, or the other way around. Yeah. Um, oh, Edna. Oh, Edna's got the premonition. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, Edna. <laughs> So who said what, Edna, without going into all of the premonitions? <laughs> right. Um, let's see. Um, Alison, you had the drowning, and that was the little boy ah, yeah. in the rescue. Um, I'm just picking up some of the pertinent ones here. Um, Alison, you had Sarah. Yeah. Um, and Sarah was not only the daughter in the home, but she was also the sister of the drowned boy. That's right, yeah. Mm, yeah. 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 yeah, she was uh, Sadie, known as Sarah, wasn't yeah. she? And yeah. wasn't it when when we got to talk to the little boy, um, didn't Sarah, the, ho the who lived in the house, didn't she remind him of his sister? Yes. And that's right. why he'd attached himself to her. Yeah, she looked very much like her. She yeah. did. Yeah. Yes. It was believed that the little boy was the son of the Barden family, who drowned in Hillsburg Upper Pond at the age of 10. But what of the little girl spirit? Is she somehow connected to him? When we were wandering around, we came across um, a little girl um, in spirit. There's a child here. I think it's a little girl. We didn't feel that she needed any help, as in to be, you know, sent over to the light. She was quite happy. So I believe that somebody saw the little girl. Um, I believe it's it's yourself. Yes, I, I saw her. Where, where did you see her? Where, whereabouts she was did you in see? the corner of my bedroom. Oh, okay. Beaming. Beaming. Smile. A girl was kneeling over the edge of the chair, and she vanished. Because the little girl that you saw is this little boy's sister. Oh, yes. And she also was there to help with the rescue. We have a picture of that little boy's sister. Oh, yeah. Okay. And this is where this her name is Sadie, but also known as Sarah. She's also known as Sarah. I got the name Sarah. Oh. It's your name, Sarah. Wow. So she shares your name. The rescue mediums believe that the spirit of the little girl is one Sadie Barden, who bears an uncanny similarity to Sarah, the homeowner's daughter. When this little girl came in to visit my mom, uh -huh. she thought it was Sarah. And if you look at the eyes, okay, she Perfect. looks yeah. like Sarah. It appears that the Barden boy was drawn to Sarah because of this resemblance. Oh, oh, didn't didn't um, didn't Sarah have on her bedroom door a plaque or something that said "No boys allowed"? Yeah, no boys allowed or boys yeah. kicked out or something like that. Yeah, yeah, and, and I it, remember you know, that because that little boy in spirit was visiting, wasn't right, he? Yeah. yeah. So she said, "No boys allowed." Mm. The mediums begin their investigation in Sarah's playroom. No boys allowed. Oh, <laughs> that's good, actually. They're okay I'm with then, that. aren't we? Yeah, because yeah, we're not boys, that's yeah. why. Oh, wow. Mm. Stars everywhere. When you visited the house before we got there, um, what, did, did, were you aware of anything yourself there? Could you feel any energy there yourself? Well, I, I mean, I, I did feel like uh, a sort of a, a buzz like in the general atmosphere, like something was around there. Yeah, it yeah. felt like that. And yeah. then when I met with the the, the homeowners, um, I got a feeling that it's just a feeling that uh, there was something going on. And then I spoke to Sarah, and because she was only little, mm. and um, in broken kid language, <laughs> yeah. she, uh, I remember that she described to me that there is someone else in the house. I don't know why I'm thinking that. 
Mm. But that uh, she did say there's somebody else in the house. Oh, is there a, a, an easy way for people to differentiate between an adult spirit and a child spirit? Um, well, a child spirit will will play play tricks normally. <laughs> They'll move things, you know, just like a child would. Uh, anyway, so a little bit mischievous. Um, um, yeah, pulling I on think, clothes as well, Jackie. Yeah. Do you remember we've had a few that have done that? Yeah. Pulling on clothes, you can feel your clothes being pulled. Yeah. Or they'll put the little hand in yours. That's yes, that happened. That's time. happened to it. Yeah. But not sort of not a, a bad feeling. <laughs> I have a feeling that somebody's took it on my leg. Oh, that's funny because you've just done that and I just done that. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Yeah. Just saying energy feels small, sounds ridiculous. Yeah. But no, it, I, I totally it's small. understand what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a small energy rather yeah. than quite a, a tall energy or a wide yeah. energy. or Yeah, so it's okay. how the energy feels. So, Edna, have you got any uh, more um, jewels like that Michael was talking about? Have you got <laughs> any more jewels for us that we're not aware of when we go to... Um, you know, do our our thing. Yeah, I like this, you know, because I think we learn a lot, you know, by listening to Webner in the call sheets and listening yeah. to what Michael says when they go into the house to talk to the homeowners, yeah. you know, way before we go. And it's sort of like, ah, you know, and it's really exciting to hear. Yeah. Well, I, found, I found something in the, in the folders here that I can't explain what it is who drew it, why it's, um, I, I'm just curious, I'm just going to show you just because. If, it's not, if it looks like a kid's drawn it, it's me. <laughs> but if it looks really, really, really good, it's Jackie. Um, <laughs> see. Um, what maybe it's almost like, a, uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's very faint. Ah, no, it might be, does that look like one of mine, Jackie? Because there was one I remember that looked like, it was an area, a garden yeah. area, and it looked like my guide was up in a an aeroplane or something, and it was like mm. an aerial view of something. Yeah. And it turned out to be the, the garden in the house. Yeah, it's it was on. like a map. It was like a, a map. Yeah. Actually, it looks quite rude there, the bit that I can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I, I think that probably is right. It was the aerial view of a... You know, they always fascinated me, you know, Al. when you did, when you do those, when you do your psychic art like that, they really are maps and huge clues yeah. as to what we're going to find when we get there or yeah. to how it comes together. Yeah, that's it. Here's yeah. one that you did and it's dated, but you didn't sign it. Yeah, well, that sounds like me early on. I probably didn't. Yeah. yeah. And if this yeah. was the first episode... And it yeah. is very map-like. Very map-like, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and they they were usually really uh, spot on with the area that was very active, like whether it was an area in the house or, you know, just or amazing, outside. You know. Yeah. So what did you think after the first one that you did, considering this was your first episode? What, what were your thoughts when it was all over? I can tell you how I felt. I was like literally buzzing, you know? And because it was the first one that I'd um, done, I just I just knew that it was going to go from strength to strength. Not not because I was in it, but strength to strength for me because I still had a lot to learn, you know. Um, and I was just amazed. I mean, synchronicity with with that first one was just yeah. phenomenal with the rainbow um, and you know everything that we got in the premonitions and you know. You've got matching uh, things on, you've got a dragonfly oh, and you've got a dragonfly as well. Oh, you've got a dragonfly and I have as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start. Yeah. It's a very good start. Yeah. So we're going to go through some things and then we can have a little bit of a chat about, okay. about it all. Okay. Right. Lots of orbs. Somebody who's seen lots of orbs, you know, like spirit orbs, like either flashes <laughs> of light or orbs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we can relate to that. Oh good. <laughs> well, I got the name Sarah. Oh. It's your name Sarah. Wow. That's brilliant, isn't it? 
someone with psychic ability but is actually going down the wrong direction and needs just guiding in the right direction. Something that happened 11 years ago, and I can't be more specific than that, that's what I've been given, but it's definitely 11 years ago. And a rainbow connection, a fire. Somebody who's drowned or drowning. A child who is in the spirit world. Wow. Who's been seen in the house, that's trying to get attention. And I could see at that point how it all comes together. Yeah. Because I remember specifically saying to you, Jackie, when you said to me, you've got to open up, speak to, <laughs> speak to your spirit guide, and they'll give you clues as to either where, you know, as to where we're going or who the homeowners are or who we're going to uh, send over to the light. You, and you, because we don't know where we're going. And I thought, wow. That's a bit of a that's a bit of a big job to take on, isn't it? And I was thinking, oh my God, how am I gonna do? I have to get used to the cheers, Alison. But I think you quite enjoy that. <laughs> and it's nice having the cheers, having the whatever it is we're having, the wine. Having a little tip, having a little tipple there. That yeah. was wasn't that one in a graveyard? Didn't yeah. we do yes, the cheers was. to that one in a Round graveyard? The yeah. yeah. Isn't that how it all the little boy and his sister, who is also Sarah. Oh, what have we got there? Well, you know they say normally spirit and spirit don't mix. They do. Well, they do in this case. They do. Let's have a little spirit. Cheers! Michael must go to these locations to, you know, to... to, to uh, talk to the homeowners in advance with Edna and all the time he's probably going yep yeah, that would be a great place to do an arrival that would be a great place to do a cheers yeah. <laughs> is that how you do it Michael that's when you go exactly to right. take a, a look is, no is that, that that's exactly right um, yeah I mean they I'm thinking of the other uh, episodes that we've done I remember driving by a, a firehouse and uh, there was an antique fire truck Oh yes, so yeah. We out and the action is about to heat up. Oh, I'm just looking up an old flame. Oh my god. <laughs> Jackie and Christine are internationally renowned psychics who spend their days and nights helping wayward spirits into the light. So yeah. We use that. And yeah. then I remember a, a, a police car. Yes. And uh, <laughs> and they agreed to uh, do it and they put the siren on and uh, yeah. They're on their way to help. Oh my. <laughs> this may prove to be an arresting experience. It's a police car. It's a matter of the uniform. Jackie and Christine are internationally renowned psychics who spend their days and nights showing wayward spirits into the light. Do you have many bad boys in the back of this car? Lots of bad boys back oh. there. We've come at the wrong time then. <laughs> Where are we? Yeah, I mean, I always look around. Oh, what's that? Oh, I wonder if they would do this, you know, basically for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. Michael, I think that's down to your personality to approach a stranger and just say, <laughs> we're doing this show. Probably. It's called Rescue Mediums. Can we borrow your ambulance? We only need it for a couple of minutes. We've done that. We've had an ambulance. <laughs> the rescue mediums are on their way to help. Are you all right? <laughs> Breathe. Breathe. <laughs> the paranormals get a little help from some paramedics. Everything good back there, ladies? You got any scotch and stuff? Oh, oh, we don't want anybody rolling out now. <laughs> what, Jackie flying out the back? <laughs> 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 yeah, and we've had a hearse. We have. I was thinking of that one, Michael. That was what was in my head. The hearse. Yeah. That I, I felt it, that felt really creepy going in the back of that, lying down in the back of that. Oh, and yeah. we were picking sure. up on names, I think, of who'd actually been in it, as in <laughs> who they were carrying. Do you remember that? Yeah. We were like <laughs> on a roll at one point, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> the rescue mediums are dead set on helping. I'm dead cold. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel dead. <laughs> this is where we start with them. Yes. So maybe we're going to get some inside stories.
Sensing that others may be along for this ride, the rescue mediums make contact. This is going to sound really stupid. Yeah, so is mine. Tell me yours first. Tommy Tucker. And I've just, I've just got a milkman. Jackie and Alison are renowned psychic mediums who spend their days and nights showing wayward spirits into the light. Are we there yet? Are we dead yet? No, I said, are we there yet? No, are we dead yet? Oh, I thought <laughs> <laughs> The rescue mediums have been given no prior knowledge of their destination. I wonder where we're going. I hope it's not a graveyard. <laughs> Even the name of the town has been kept secret until now. Although they... So, Sandy, can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Uh, um, what has been your favourite arrival that you can think of, mode of transport, as a viewer? Right. Um, I really, really like the ice cream truck. As a treat for the homeowners, the rescue mediums are already en route. Well, this is fun, isn't it? It's a cool way to travel. It is. It? It's a very cool way to travel. <laughs> Jackie and Alison are renowned psychic mediums who spend their days and nights showing wayward spirits into the light. I really, really remember the hearse because I remember my skin crawling and just thinking <laughs> I couldn't do that and just getting really, really nervous. And with the ice cream truck, you looked like you were freezing, but you were laughing and giggling so much. <laughs> I kept thinking, it was a fun one. Yeah. if they're this happy at the beginning, yeah. what's coming up? Because this yeah. is going to be tense. Two mediums have been given no prior knowledge of their destination. Oh, we're here. What's Jack? Jackie! Jackie! Even the name of the town has been kept secret until now. So I always... I was lulled into a false sense of security. <laughs> That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. As if you, I never even thought about that. Like how the viewer perceives it when we yeah. have that arrival. Oh yeah. Uh, it's like, why are they making us feel really good now? Is this a really scary episode? Because we don't <laughs> know at that point what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. It's yeah. funny so. because you say, uh, you, you say, uh, and Sandy, I think you're right that um, the beginning arrival uh, is meant to get some humor, you know, make people like on this level so they're not scared about anything. Yeah. And then they get scared during the episode. And then the cheers at the end, I think, is a way to bring them back into, uh, <clears throat> you know, reality. Yeah. That's what I think. True. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think we should do a cheers right now because this is yes. reality. <laughs> the yeah. Zoom Zoom is our is our reality. <laughs> Thank you so well, much. Everybody. Cheers right now. We should do a uh, a bad joke. Go that's, on then, Michael. Do your Michael. do your work. All right. Well, apropos of the lion that's behind you, Alison, <laughs> yes, and the uh, one that you drew, Jackie. Mm. There's a story about a pub up in Hillsborough and uh, the local zookeeper used to go there for a drink. And one day he uh, had a drinking competition with a giraffe from the zoo. And uh, he beat the giraffe and the giraffe's head flopped on the bar and the zookeeper started to leave. And the bartender said, hey, hey, you can't leave that lion here. He goes, it's not a lion, it's a giraffe. <laughs> you can't leave that lion here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not lion here. <laughs> oh, you know, that's got to be one of the, the best. Because it, you can see all of us going, oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> first, oh no. <laughs> Oh, thank you, cheers, thank you, everybody. Cheers, everyone. Thanks cheers. for watching. Cheers, cheers everybody. Cheers. <laughs> oh.